In activity five, the wheel and axle, students investigate the wheel and axle and how they can be used to magnify force. The students first assemble a tractor, then investigate the transfer of force between the axles and the wheels of the tractor, and finally discover the mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle simple machine. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity sheet five, long rubber bands, short rubber bands, wide rubber bands, tractor kits, roll of string, roll of masking tape, and sandpaper strips from activity three. You will also need to provide pairs of safety goggles, metric rulers, flat slot screwdrivers, and a pair of scissors. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of activity sheet five for each student and clear some space on the floor for students to experiment with their tractors. Cut a piece of string 15 centimeters long for each team of students. Each student will need a pair of safety goggles, and each team of four will need a short rubber band, a long rubber band, two wide rubber bands, a metric ruler, a screwdriver, a piece of string, a small piece of tape, and a tractor kit. To begin the activity, distribute the materials to the class. It helps students assemble their tractors. First, insert the large axle through the larger holes in the frame and attach a large wheel to each end of this axle. Then insert the small axle through the smaller holes in the frame and attach a small wheel to each end of this axle. If necessary, lightly sand the ends of the axles so they will fit snugly into the wheels and wrap a wide rubber band around each of the two large rear wheels. Insert the peg into the hole in the large axle and push it in all the way so that it's flush on one side and sticks out on the other. Then put a small piece of masking tape over the end of the peg that is flush with the axle. Finally, screw the smaller screw eye into the hole near the small axle and the larger screw eye into the hole at the rear of the frame. Make sure that students screw in the screw eyes all the way so that the tension from the rubber band will not dislodge them. Explain to the class that an axle is a shaft to which one or more wheels are attached and that an axle is smaller in diameter than the wheel, but because it is inserted into the center of the wheel, each revolution of the axle causes the wheel to make one complete revolution and vice versa. Ask students, why do you think it is important that the axle rotates freely in the holes in the frame? Students should note that the wheels must rotate freely in order to reduce the friction between the axle and the frame of the tractor. Allow students time to experiment with their tractors and observe the function of the wheel and axle as a unit. Tell them that their tractors are able to roll because of a simple machine called the wheel and axle. Then, instruct students to complete questions one and two of their activity sheets. When students have completed their activity sheets, tell them to attach a long rubber band to the small screw eye and the wooden peg on the rear axle. Wind the rubber band around the axle by rotating the rear wheels backward three full turns. Note that students should wear safety goggles whenever they're winding the rubber bands. Ask students, what are you doing as you wind up the rubber band? Encourage answers that relate to work. Then ask, what is the force that is being applied? Where is the force stored? Students should understand that winding the rubber band around the axle is supplying the force and that the force is stored in the rubber band. Have students set their wound up tractors on the floor and let them go. After all of the tractors have come to a stop, ask students, where did the force to move the wheels forward come from? Students should respond that the force was transferred from the axle to the wheels. Next ask, over what distance was the force applied? Students should understand that the distance is the circumference of the wheel. Write the equation W equals F times D, or work is equal to force multiplied by distance. Inform students that the amount of work performed by the axle is the same as the amount of work performed by the wheel. In other words, the amount of work remains constant, even as the force is transferred from axle to wheel. Point to the letter D in the equation and ask students, if the circumference of the wheel is larger than the circumference of the axle, what happens to the amount of force transferred to the wheel? Explain that they will conduct an experiment to find out whether force increases or decreases when it is transferred from the axle to the wheel. To do this, look at how much force is needed to perform a certain amount of work using first the axle and then the wheel. 
point out to students that although the question has been rephrased, they're still testing the same principle. That is, if work stays constant and distance is changed, what happens to the force? Have students turn their tractors upside down, remove the large rubber band, and attach the short rubber band to the wooden peg on the rear axle and the larger screw eye at the rear end of the tractor. Tell students to wind the rubber band around the axle like they did before, but this time to wind the rubber band around twice, once using the wheel to make the three rotations and once using the axle to make the three rotations. Compare the relative amount of force it took to wind the rubber band using the axle with the amount it took using the wheel. Then, instruct students to answer question three on their activity sheets. Ask students, will you be performing the same amount of work in both cases? Students should respond that since they rotate the axle and wheel three times in both cases, the amount of work will be the same. When they have finished, ask students, was it easier to wind the rubber band by turning the wheel or by turning the axle? Which required less force? Guide students to understand that it took less force to wind the rubber band by turning the wheel and explain that as distance increases, force decreases. Further explain that because the circumference of the wheel is bigger than the circumference of the axle, the force they need to apply to turn the wheel three rotations is distributed over a greater distance, and therefore the force needed to turn it is decreased. Next, tell students to complete question four on their activity sheets. Ask students, do you think it would be harder or easier to wind the rubber band using a bigger wheel? Students should recognize that the bigger the wheel, the smaller the force needed to rotate it. Explain to the class that just as a force is decreased as it is transferred from an axle to a wheel, force is increased when transferred from a wheel to an axle. Tell students that this magnification of force creates a mechanical advantage. Ask students what household tool uses the mechanical advantage of a wheel and axle. If students do not suggest it, hold up a screwdriver. Explain that the screwdriver handle is like a wheel, it's larger in circumference, and the shaft is like an axle, it's smaller in circumference. Next, distribute a screwdriver, a metric ruler, and a piece of string to each team. Have students use the string and ruler to measure the circumference of the handle and the shaft of the screwdriver, and instruct them to record their results on their activity sheets. Ask the students to explain what happens to the force as it is transferred from the handle, which is where it is applied, to the end of the shaft, which is where it is used to turn a screw. Remind them to use the terms in the equation work equals force times distance in their explanations. Have students answer questions 7 and 8 on their activity sheets. To conclude the activity, tell students to remove the short rubber band from their tractors, but to leave the wide rubber bands on the rear wheels. Have them return the assembled tractors, string, and long and short rubber bands to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.